My name's Karen Batty, I'm the housing officer for Kirklees Neighbourhood Housing. The estate I manage is Shaw Cross. It's, it's a semi-rural estate um, and it takes quite a lot of keeping up to because of the high expectation of the residents on the estate. But you feel constantly under pressure to make sure that the estate looks good uh, and that the people are living here happily and getting on with their lives. My name's Prim Bumford, I'm, I'm a housing officer and I manage the Ashworth and West Town Estates at Dewsbury. We're actually at Ashworth Lodge Community Centre and this morning they've got the coffee morning uh, and it's an opportunity for all the tenants and residents um, to get together, have a little bit of a natter and it gives them the chance to come and talk to me about sort of any concerns that they might have um, on the estate or anything that they need some help with with regards to the tenancy. Quite often tenants ask me, what, what do you do? And I, I usually sort of say anything and everything to do with your tenancy or, or the, the area that you live in. And I deal with lots and lots of different types of issues, right down from sort of dirty gardens to child protection issues. And each day is so different. The first time um, a new resident on the estate would meet me would be at the new tenancy visit and that's generally around about two, three weeks after they've signed for the tenancy and that's basically a get to know you uh, session really, check that they've they're okay they've moved into the property but also make sure that everything's working in the property and that they're happy and settled. I give them the telephone number for repairs and I give them the telephone number for bulky items of rubbish and bins and on the reverse of the card is my mobile and I say anything other than that or more complicated than that you can ring me for. I can walk down the estate now and I'll get stopped by quite a few people because they recognise my face um, and, and know me because you, you, some tenants you deal with quite constantly and others you might only meet them once at a new tenancy visit they don't need anything else and it might be another six months before you speak to them. We do quarterly estate inspections and I work very closely with the Tenant and Residence Association and we meet and we have a walk around the estate and, and pull together a plan of how to get things sorted for them and that can be just like litter on the streets up to major repairs if we see a, a roof tile uh, that's moved or some guttering that's hanging off it, it's a, a variety of things that we're looking at the key to a good housing officer it's about building relationships with our tenants and residents and that takes time that really does take a lot of time we're quite often the first person to realize that there's a social problem so we've got to see our jobs as not looking at the symptoms but looking at the causes. What you have to do is ask and ask and think sideways and see round the processes because the problems that people say we have to watch out for like um, child protection, like domestic violence, like drugs and alcohol, needles, things like that, they don't come to you in a phone call. So there's all these things that you have to look for, for. things come to you in disguise People can access support through me. I work very closely with a lot of agencies, but we do do a lot of support ourselves, calling in regular if there's a vulnerable tenant. Um, for instance, I've got a young young lad that's just moved onto the estate who um, is severely autistic, and he's got masses of support in place uh, that are coming in um, on a daily basis. But I call in once a week just to say hi um, and, and really show my face to him so that he feels confident that, you know, if, if his support workers aren't around and I am, I'm there for him. It's about making sure that if a tenant has got a problem, what is it, what can we do to help, who else can get involved, what can we do to make your life better? If we can't help, then find out who can help them and signpost them to the relevant agencies. But I do get quite a few complaints of such antisocial behaviour and I know that's one of the things that people are reluctant to report because they think that the person will find out. We will never, never reveal who it is that's, that's made a complaint when we're talking to the person that's causing the problem. We do take that part of our job very seriously because the last thing we want is residents to suffer unnecessarily for a long period of time. I use the law and I use 
our policies. So people need to realise that we will back up what we say. We don't just give empty threats, we do back it up. Talking to somebody that's causing a problem, you might identify sort of reasons behind it that they've got a drink problem or there's other issues that they're depressed and they're playing, they've got the telly on at night to sort of keep them company. Um, if that's the case, then we can do um, referrals for support for them as well. There are some things that I would say were not my job. I mean, one example would be I had a lady ringing me up saying, the cat at number 56 is terrorising me. The cat pinned me up against the wall. I was coming back to my house and the cat pinned me up against the wall. It's not a housing problem. There isn't a breach of tenancy here. You know, I'm not really able to deal with it. What my big task is, is to try and get some community groups together to get my younger tenants out of the flats during the day doing things um, that they want to do. It might be salsa, it might be keep fit, it might be cooking classes because we've got um, a kitchen in the community centre. It might be um, learning languages, you know, it could be lots and lots of things. Yes, I'm probably the last person to see as well. Um, if somebody puts in a termination form, um, we go out and do a pre-termination uh, pre visit to make sure that they understand what needs to be done, when the keys need to be returned, to make sure that there isn't any damage in the property, that they could rectify themselves, just to find out as well from them what their experience was of living on the estate, the reason for them moving, just to, to get their opinions really and their feedback about whether we should be changing things and what their experience of being a tenant's been. Well, a good tenant to me is somebody that uh, makes the most of their home, really, and and is happy and gets on with the neighbours um, and contributes to the community. Um, you know, uh, the ideal tenant really is somebody that I don't get to know very well, really, because I don't have to go and see them to tell them off. <laughs> so I just get to see them by them shouting, hi, Karen, in the street, and everything OK, yes, everything's fine. Um, certainly getting involved with the Tenant and Residents Association. Uh, you know, a good tenant would be somebody who would be willing to be involved in that and, and really want to keep the estate in good condition and, and, and respect other people. Obviously from, from Kirkley's neighbourhood housing point of view is to pay the rent or to arrange to pay the rent um, on time. Um, to maintain the property to a, to a good standard, know what's happening, know who you can talk to if, if you've got a problem. It sticks to the tenancy agreement um, and gets involved in what's going on. I did have a really good tenant recently where we had the floods, you know, when um, it was cold weather and all the pipes were bursting. I had a young lass whose pipes burst and her whole house was completely drenched and she has a young baby and she was away at the time and her neighbour had a key and between us, me and him, we got the heating on full blast every day. He emptied the dehumidifiers every day. And by the time she came back, her carpets were completely dry, so she was able to live in that house rather than me having to move her out. A kind of old-fashioned neighbour, really. It's the best job in the world, really, because I get myself into lots of situations and get involved in people's lives and it's privilege. I love my job and the most important thing about being a housing officer is it, it is about the people that live on our estates and it's about caring for those people. The most important quality that a housing officer should have is to care about people because ultimately they are the ones that we are working hard for.